I absolutely cannot believe this. This is insane. A lot of people are now canceling their Stellar Blade pre-orders after watching this IGN review video. Yeah, I, I absolutely cannot believe it. And instead, people are now actively choosing to upgrade their pre-orders to Deluxe Edition. <laughs> You are not expecting the plot twist, right? Come on, stop lying to me. Yeah, people are actually talking about this game. And we got this IGN. We got this IGN review, guys. Uh, this is absolutely gonna be the best thing that we ever do tonight. Get ready. Fasten your seatbelts right now. It's gonna be bumpy. Like the video if you want female characters being females. Dislike the video if you want DEI, SBI, <laughs> and you want female characters being played by men. I, I I do agree that we men the best, but like, come on, what a, what about equality? We wanna give equal chances to everybody. Like the video if you agree, but roll it. Check this. In his own words, Stellar Blade director Hyung Tae Kim is a visualist, not a okay. storyteller. Meaning, whatever Stellar Blade lacks in its story, he's tried to make up for in its gameplay. It was a refreshingly transparent statement, and after playing through Stellar Blade, it's also one that I find mostly accurate. Uh -huh. This is a uh -huh. gorgeous action game with excellent character and monster design, and exciting combat that continues to evolve in fun and interesting ways across the 30 hour adventure. Its story, light RPG elements, and the actual substance of its characters on the other hand, fall well short of the high mark set by its combat. Stellar okay. Blade certainly isn't pristine, and yeah. in some spots it's positively dull, but it's sharp in the areas that matter the most. Now to understand the gravity of this situation, this happened, this review is coming and let me take you back like a couple of weeks ago, okay? So IGN actually said, women will self-delete over Stellar Blade claim IGN editor after company apologizes over his story. So IGN came out and they were like, okay, we apologize, we apologize, we apologize, we apologize. Then this second had the audacity to come out and say that women will self-delete, women will self-delete, and he even as far, went as far as to say that if you're a gamer and you played this game, you're gonna end up beating your wife. Bruh. Can you actually believe it? And I have... I cannot believe it that I have to be the one to tell y'all this, but like most gamers don't have a wife, okay? You had to fight me on this one to prove me wrong, but most gamers, if you have a wife, you're a rare breed, guys. With that context in mind, I think you understand the story a lot more now. This uh, review is gonna hit a little bit different right now, guys. Wait for it. Yay! Strong! Independent! Stellar Blade setting is a familiar one. The Earth is a post-apocalyptic wasteland, Dang. and humans have fled to a colony in space. You play as Eve, a member of the 7th Airborne God Squad, damn. who was sent to the surface to eliminate the threat of the Natiba. Horrific monster. It, it was that jawline that actually kind of like lit a fire under under their ass, but in a bad way. Monsters that laid claim to Earth once the humans fled. What follows is a predictable tale that sees Eve linking up with the last remnants of human civilization and collecting four hypercores guarded by four big bosses, each yeah. of which comes with new revelations that answer the questions of what happened. Yeah, I feel like that one of those big bosses gotta be an uh, gotta be that IGN employee, absolutely. The Earth, why the humans fled to space, what created the Natibas, and so on and so forth. Okay. None of the reveals were particularly surprising, and while the back half of the story is a little bit more interesting once all the cards are laid out on the table, any emotional moments fell flat for me because of a near complete lack of character building in the front half. Yeah, and this yeah, is really yeah. the <laughs> biggest issue with Stellar Blade's story. Its yeah, characters yeah. lack any kind of personality, True. charm, charisma, True. or anything that could have endeared me towards them in any sort of way. Okay. After 30 hours, I can barely tell you anything noteworthy oh, about Eve outside of the fact now, that- Now, the craziest thing is that what if the guy is speaking the truth, right? Here's the thing, nobody's gonna take it seriously, even I'm not taking it seriously and see we're in a real problem right now because I'm sure there are some normal folks out there that just truly don't understand this woke stuff, non-woke stuff, and that's perfectly fine, right? If you don't get it, you don't wanna participate in that, I get it, I get it, you don't care whether a game is woke or non-woke, obviously we here, we don't want the games being woke because it destroys the games, right? It destroys the story, it destroys uh, basically everything about it, and then like people uh, have a sour taste in their mouth so i'm absolutely against it like the video if you're against it dislike the video if you're for it diversity is good but forced diversity is the problem where they re-swap gender swap for literally no reason for literally no reason but here's the thing i gotta believe that somebody's out there 
that is like dog i need to uh should i buy this game should i not buy this game let me let me just google like reviews up and let me see the reviews now of course and i totally get it if you are fighting against this woke crap you're probably gonna give it like 9, 10 easy, right? And I understand where you're coming from because, you know, the opposite and equal reaction that I believe Newton's once talked about everything, everything has an opposite and equal reaction, right? So it's like, those Wokies gonna give it one, zero, 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 maybe two, maybe three like that. And they're gonna be like, yeah, man, you need to nerf Eve character. This is, you know, females are gonna self-delete if they play and all that. When you hear crap like that, uh, they're, they're gonna give it like one, zero and all that. And obviously there is pressure, I, I feel like there is pressure on these uh, outlets that ended up getting these review copies because they know that if they give this game too low of a score, then nobody's gonna trust their reviews in the future. So I, I find that also problematic as well because nowadays it's like, if you like one thing about it, 10 out of 10. If you dislike one thing about it, 0 out of 10. It, it's crazy. I, I, I'm sure somebody out there is genuinely wanting to know whether this game is a banger or not. If you guys are, if you guys played it, let me know in the comments for sure she's what's your take dedicated is. to her mission Honestly. she's very close with her fellow seventh airborne squad mate taki and she doesn't like getting wet i'd like to avoid getting wet oh. we're never really given any sort of insight as to who she is as a character she's got no sense of humor and her interactions with her companions adam and lily are incredibly shallow those two uh -huh. don't fare much better either Despite the fact that they act like they share a strong bond, it never feels believable because you never really see that bond being formed. Without any of that, it was hard to become invested in Eve, her mission, or Stellar Blade's world in general. Oh. Oh, okay, be sharp, agile, the sword. Ow. It's gonna get Thankfully, deep, guys. Thankfully, the most important Wait part of an it. action game is the action itself, and Stellar Blade checks pretty much all the boxes when it comes to its combat. It's smoothly animated, challenging, satisfying, has a healthy amount of enemy variety, and while there's a lot of depth, it never became overwhelming in what it demanded of me. Yeah. You could say that Stellar Blade's <laughs> combat is derivative, yeah. but at the very least, it's derived from one of the best in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Like Sekiro, oh, it is very defense-driven. Enemies are prone to launching into long, uninterruptible combos, and the only way to properly deal with them is to precisely press the block button just before their attacks land. My guy is so salty though. What if he's not salty and it's just coming across this way? Right, guys? Like, my guy is so salty. You know what? Let me add this. We need a photo mode for research purposes, by the way, for research purposes. Bruh. Like the video if you agree. Like the and video if you agree. To parry each attack one after the other. We need a photo other. mode in this Every game, parry you land takes away a point from the enemy's balance. And once their balance is broken, you're able to land a hugely damaging blow that will kill most standard enemies outright and deal massive damage to bosses. Unparryable attacks oh are clearly telegraphed with flashes of color. A yellow flash means an attack is straight up unblockable and needs to be dodged. Okay. Yeah, wow. A blue yeah, flash yeah. signals an attack that you can blink past by holding forward and dodging through the opponent to their backside. And then a purple flash is the sign of an attack that can be repulsed, which forces you to hold back and press the dodge button at just the right time to deflect and expose the enemy's weak point. Yeah, that's nice. That's Once nice. again, all of this is very similar to Sekiro style yeah. of telegraphing unblockable moves <laughs> that either must be jumped over, be curry countered, or avoid at all costs. And it works just as well here. Developer IGN. Shift Up smartly didn't settle. You can you cannot spell ignorant without saying IGN. Yeah, man, I, I'm feeling the salt way too much. The salt meter is off the charts in this one, bro. For just straight up copying Sekiro's combat either. It adds its own twists in the form of beta skills, which are a series of four special attacks that Eve can use for specific purposes, including a wide sweeping attack that hits multiple enemies, a triple stab attack that does massive single target damage, yeah. a shockwave type move that hits enemies at a distance, and a shield breaker that deals extra damage to an enemy's armor. These attacks can be used by spending beta energy, which is gained by landing hits and parrying strikes. So oh, you're no. well incentivized to engage with the enemy as opposed to just running away and sneaking in a hit when you can. Okay, on a real though, no jokes, no memes this time. Like, I'm being objective right now. Bruh. Might not sound like this, but, but like, I played the beta, loved it. The only thing I didn't like, and maybe, you know, and when you play the actual game, you can upgrade and you can unlock new skill, and maybe it, it's gonna be a thing like that. 
uh, basically the only thing that I uh, that I didn't like was that you couldn't necessarily dodge I mean you can dodge but it's not fast right I wish there were like barrel rolls or you can just roll around when the enemy would like fight you uh, I, I guess it's like more like a souls game uh, and I personally never really played a souls game right uh, yeah so maybe that's what it is maybe maybe it's meant to be like that and if that's the case that's the case but that's the only thing that I personally didn't like it's like you get hit a lot and you cannot necessarily dodge it though Maybe there's gonna be an upgrade later on. Maybe that's what it is. And those of you that played it, let me know if that's true or not. But I wanna know, like, what has Speaking them of made? those enemies, one of the areas in which Stellar Blade particularly excels in is its enemy variety and design. There are more than 48 different types of Natiba to fight against, and while some of them are only slight variations of each other with different weapons, 48? at least those different weapons have their own combos and techniques oh. that you need to learn in order to properly deal with them. Boss fights are great too, with intense- Activision and Call of Duty be like, okay, we need to add like 48 microtransactions at launch, we need 48 more! Or, and later on in the game's life cycle, it's not just 48 bundles, individual bundles, it's 48 times the bundles of the last game in comparison. So they're trying to up it like every single year. It'd be like that. So these things are actually giving us 48 different- <laughs> Don DeMarco real quick, that, that's a, that's a, that's a deadly right there, Battles Absolutely. against huge and aggressive monsters that always had me on the edge of my seat. Combat oh, felt no. fresh all throughout the 30 hours it took me to beat it. Partially uh -huh. because of the aforementioned enemy variety, but also because at just about every major chapter in the campaign, I would get a new tool or mechanic that changed up how I approached certain encounters. There's a wrist mounted drone that could fire a bunch of different ammo types from a distance, along with new mechanics like burst skill. Man, this was crazy! This is crazy! Did you see that? A wrist mounted Did drone that could fire oh a bunch of different God. ammo types from a distance, along with new mechanics like burst skills that added yet another layer of resource management and became critical for tough fights. Man, her accuracy is like, like hot right there, bro. Crazy, bro. Burst this skills are similar meant. to beta skills in that they are special attacks that require energy to use, but they are more powerful and typically result in an enemy being slumped on the ground. Okay. To balance that added strength, burst energy is much harder to build, requiring you to yeah. either perfectly dodge enemy attacks, successfully use a blink or repulse, or by spending a point of your beta energy to use a beta chain, which essentially exchanges the two resources. It was okay. fun to make on the fly decisions can, about then. whether to spend two points of beta energy on a less powerful beta skill or spend a single point to gain a point of burst energy and then use a much stronger attack later. Yeah, I think you can. So, yeah, I, I like that dodge. Like the way she dodged that crazy. Okay, I think you can then. I, I, I guess you gotta upgrade, I think. Uh, I just got my answer. I think that's it's pretty good. It's considerations like these that really make some of the tougher bosses in Stellar Blade sing. Not to mention the fact that the burst skills themselves just look cool as all hell. The cherry on top of all this excellent Ow. action is the exceptional soundtrack, which features yeah. everything from blood pumping bangers during boss battles. Yo, I'm shocked right now that they have nothing bad to say about that, though. Holy crap. I mean, to be honest, though, like, it was busting, though. Even though I'm not a weeb, uh, I don't watch anime, but, like, playing this game kind of made me feel like that. Okay, oh shit. The, the, the background music was truly, truly insane. To, yo, the, the glasses, I feel like that, yo, shoddy kind of looking hot with them glasses, though. Damn. Yo, I, I feel like, yo, glasses or no glasses, I, I'd go with glasses, bro. Beautiful, ear-tingling melodies while exploring its desolate world. Look, look at that ponytail fly. <laughs> yo, that ponytail flying right there. Oh, my God, bro. Hidden beauty? But I thought you guys didn't like the beauty. Uh, you mean this kind of hidden beauty? Bruh. Yo, if this is the, the, the hidden beauty they're talking about, then holy crap. And guys, right as we get down to the climax here, if you guys use Twitter, Instagram, or Twitch, uh, these are my social media handles. I would love to have you there. Everything is Skizzlex. The links are always in the description. Just in case, you never know, right? If you use any of these social media, I would love to have you there, okay? All right, let's get back down to the content now, boo-boo. When you're not hacking away at Stellar Blade's horrific looking Natima monstrosities, you'll be doing some light RPG activities like oh exploring Zion, mankind's last bastion of civilization, restocking at shops, changing your hair, <clears throat> picking up quick and light requests from a bulletin board, or taking on meteor side quests from NPCs. True to everything else in Stellar Blade, none of these tasks were particularly interesting from a storytelling perspective, save for one involving a man and his love for a broken down singing android. What? Is that so? 
They do occasionally culminate in a big round two fight against a stronger version of a boss I had previously fought, but outside those few moments, I quickly found myself tired of the side quest grind. First off, many of these side quests have you returning to old levels in order to reach a specific spot to either pick up some sort of note or item to deliver no back way. to the quest giver. While this is mostly fine in the more open-ended zones where yeah, there's a map right? and numerous fast travel points uh -huh. to make travel much less of a chore, it is an absolute pain when it comes to yeah. the linear levels where you have <laughs> nothing to- <laughs> You're wrong, you're toxic, you're misogynist for actually believing that! ...guide you but a blip on your compass. Most of the time, virtually nothing has changed in these levels either, so it's literally just retracing your steps through the same level, minus any of the surprises you might have encountered on your first time through, all to collect a single item that you weren't able to pick up before. What makes this worse is that very rarely did I ever feel the effort was worth the trip. Most of the time, the rewards are just gold and EXP. EXP is great, as level ups give you skill points to explore more of Stellar Blade's well-developed skill trees. But later on, which was when the side quest fatigue started to settle in, yeah. skill points were less exciting because the remaining upgrades were either skills I had passed on because I didn't really feel like I needed them, or they felt like very incremental stat increases on moves I didn't use very often, or were just extremely situational upgrades. <laughs> then there's gold, which for the most part is a useless currency in the latter half of the campaign. <laughs> it's used pretty much exclusively for refilling consumables or getting more crafting components, oh, which I no. practically never had to do because you find so many of all of those things just yeah. by opening treasure chests and breaking boxes. Okay, it, it's so hard to know whether, like, I mean, first of all, you cannot believe the IGN reviews anymore, but like, I don't know, man. I don't know. In at, at one hand, I feel like that he's being truthful, but on the other hand, when y'all suckers be doing crap like that, I'm just, it's just so hard to believe. It's just so hard to believe right now. I, I wonder the rating, though. I wonder what's the rating. Thankfully, exploration fares much better. The two okay. open zones of Stellar Blade aren't enormous, but they are densely packed with hidden collectibles and fun enemy encounters that always made me want to thoroughly explore as much as possible oh, before damn. making a break oh, for the crap. objective marker. There are collectible cans that can be returned to your base for a variety of rewards, <laughs> core parts that increase your max health and energy, robot loot pinatas that contain all sorts of goodies, exoskeletons that greatly affect your stats and can affect your approach to combat, <clears throat> and of course, 30 or so outfits that you can use to change Eve's appearance. Yeah. There is an impressive variety among those costumes. So, for every skimpy swimsuit or super tiny miniskirt, there's also a classy dress or stylish outfit that makes Eve look like, Damn. as my wife puts it, an insta-baddie. I always- Okay, first of all, we're gonna try to take that in. What the hell? Like- <laughs> You have a wife? Oh my god. I'm having a hard time believe that. So your wife is calling her a Betty. I thought your wife... Uh, I don't mean that in any bad way whatsoever, but according to your... One of the IGN editor... According to IGN editor... Yeah! Women will self-delete. So... Maybe your wife is not a woman after all. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just speculating based on the, the prior information I received. Like, whoa, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Always man. look forward know. to finding a new skin. And truthfully, it's very satisfying to have another big action game outside of Insomniac's Spider-Man series that features really high quality unlockable cosmetics that you don't have to purchase with real money microtransactions. One other feather in Stellar Blade's cap is oh, that it mixes good, up its good. gameplay fairly well. Occasionally, you'll have to go deep underground into a creepy lab where your scanner and sword don't work, turning it into a genuinely spooky survival horror style game. There are also some cool uncharted like action sequences, as well as a good mix of linear and non linear level design. Not all of these breaks from combat hit, and the platforming heavy sections are particularly annoying whenever they come up, but they nonetheless do a good job of relieving the monotony that would come from just going fight to fight with yeah. nothing in between. After beating Stellar Blade, it's yeah, honestly, bro, I don't know why, but like some uh, set pieces in this game also kind of in a weird way reminds me of like the old school God of War 1, 2, and 3 games, right? Because I know in God of War 1 there was like a lot of puzzles, a lot of like jumping around and all that, which I actually admired. I really, really uh, did love that. I, I don't hate, I mean, I love all the God of War games, I'm a massive uh, fan, but if I could just pick one God of War game, it gotta be God of War 3. And if I could pick like a time period, I gotta pick that God. God of War 1, 2, and 3, per perhaps also like Chains of Olympus, but those games were on like PSP. Uh, I, I would go with God of War 3 as the best God of War games of all time. God of War 2018 loved it, 
Ragnarok loved it, but 2018 more than Ragnarok for me. I love all of them, but you know, if I have to pick my favorites, then in the older ones, the God of War 1, 2, and 3, I mean, those games were like bangers, bro. Like, you cannot compete. I just miss that rage and anger that Kratos had. The younger Kratos. I really hope that in the future we get to see, like, uh, what happened between God of War 3 and God of War 2018. I want a game like that, because let's be real, bro. The sequel of God of War Ragnarok... Eventually, we're gonna find out that Abby from Last of Us comes in and kills Kratos, bro. <laughs> so, like, yeah, bro, like, at this rate, that's what those things gonna do, Brad, so I don't know. Bro. Also worth mentioning that there's no New Game Plus at launch. Okay. It will be coming down the line as free DLC, but right out of the gate, there's not much waiting for you at the end beyond a hard mode that doesn't really seem to change much outside of the enemies hitting you harder. This is especially frustrating because once you beat the game, your save file with all of your unlockables, costumes, and other collectibles is basically stuck at the final boss fight. You yeah. can't take those costumes over with you to a new game, forcing you to do an entirely oh, fresh man. playthrough outside man. of one new costume that you get for beating the game, and you can't even skip cutscenes on your subsequent playthroughs. Yo, oh, man! Ah, oh, bro, I'm about to give it a 0 out of 10 IGN right, right now, bro. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? We about to give it a 0 out of 10 IGN on that? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, shit! Whoa! Oh, go oh my god. Guys, it's going down. It's going down. All right. Take a guess. Take a guess how much you think they're going to rate it. I'm, I'm expecting... Zero. Nah, they're not gonna give it zero. Knowing that there's pressure, I would be... Yeah, I don't see a 10 out of 10. I don't see a 9 either. I don't see an 8. Realistically, I feel like that either 5 or 6, they're gonna... Bruh. Okay, let's find out. Stellar Blade stands out as a gorgeous and well-crafted action game with very impressive strengths and very clear weaknesses. Both its story and characters lack substance, and some of its RPG elements are poorly implemented. Like dull side quests that very often force you to retrace your steps through previous levels, with very little done to make the return trip feel unique or rewarding. But uh -huh. its action picks up most of that slack thanks to the rock-solid fundamentals of its Sekiro-inspired combat system, a deep well of hideous monstrosities to sharpen your sword against, and plenty of hidden goodies that do a great job of incentivizing exploration all throughout. Mm, wow! What?! What? No way! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh my god! Guess we were really wrong! Okay, Salmon, not bad. But coming from IGN, I mean, I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. Like, Salmon is considered like a peasant, game made for peasants. Uh, if IGN give it seven, that's more like four, uh, ir realistically, Bruh. right? That's what it means. Thoughts on this one? Guys, recently, PlayStation actually censored Stellar Blade. Bruh. Yeah, click on this video on the screen. This recently just happened. On the left, though, this video is on my second channel. Just recently uploaded. Check out these videos, guys, and I'll see you right there.